Hi, my name is Mike Gaben, and welcome to my KSP campaign. We are here with the Korion 1 in orbit about the moon, getting ready to dock with the Kegel 2, which is going to be a lander we're going to use to bring these three brave Kerbinauts down to the surface of the moon. You may recall last episode that uh, towards the end of it, we had just set up the drift burn to set up our rendezvous, but I thought I'd skip past all that burn stuff and just cut straight to the docking so that we can get this show on the road and actually on the right there you might notice that we have three contracts that I'm aiming to fulfill and oh we got a bit of an auto save happening here okay there we go we're back and whoa whoa where are you going where the this <laughs> the yaw is stuck to one side uh, yeah, it's it's stuck. To, I I don't. It's, I'm not doing that. It's doing that. On, oh, whoa! I got yaw control back. Okay, let's turn the RCS off. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. The yaw control. The yaw was just stuck to one side and it just started spinning around. Must have had something to do with that auto save just happening at the wrong time and that control was just stuck. Well, let's bring this under some control here. Oh, great! I'm still drifting towards the Kegel. <laughs> I want to. I'm still 25 meters away. I think I should be okay. Okay, let's let's get the SAS back on. Let's get this pointed back in the right direction. Yes, I have control again. That was really weird. I didn't like that. Okay. Well, let's get it around. How far are we? Oh, we're, oh gosh. Okay, we're only we're less than 10 meters away. Jeez Louise, and we're not lined up right. Okay, let's got to back up here a little bit. Okay. Okay, my central axis velocity is now very, very small, very close to zero. All right, we're good. We should be able to just drift across here. Wow, what a pain. Okay. A little bit of a better view on the situation. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit more about the lander too. Uh, I kind of launched it a few episodes ago without much ceremony, uh, but it is designed to hold five Kerbals. And I did that because one of my contracts on the right is to put a base on the moon. In order to have a base, you need to have something that can hold five Kerbals, have communication, have a docking port, and solar panels. And this thing has all uh, all of those so it is a little bit overbuilt and man I'm really having trouble getting the docking ports to line up oh what oh geez I see what's going on here the Kegels rotating yeah the Kegels rotating just a little bit I don't know maybe I nudged it or maybe some of those RCS thrusters gave it a bit of a bit of a push I don't know but I I can't dock with it like this okay let's let's get uh, Bill over there see if putting Bill inside there will help the situation oh man this should be a routine exercise but it's turning into a bit of an adventure okay well while Bill makes his way over there why don't we talk about the other two contracts uh, the second one you see there is simply just to put a flag on the moon that's simple enough and the third one is a, a temperature scan has to be below what's that 10,800 meters above a certain waypoint um, yeah that's left over from uh, a Muna 2 contract that I botched a number of episodes ago didn't have enough fuel to complete it so the Korean is going to complete it while it's over here okay Bill you're just about there grab ah oh shoot <laughs> get out of there Bill oh oh nuts Oh, I think Bill just nudged it again. I think we're rotating even worse now. Oh, come on, Bill. Get in there. Okay, let's put on the SAS. And yes, we have now stopped rotating. Okay, let's finish this off. This should be in control now. All right, why don't we talk about what else we have coming up in this episode. Obviously, obviously we got ourselves a moon landing coming up very shortly as soon as I can get 
these guys over to the Kegel. And this is only my second crude moon landing, and the first time I've landed multiple purples down on something, so I guess that's that's something new. In the process, I learn a little bit more about Kerbal inventory system and uh, how it works, and that actually ends up affecting my ability to fulfill one of the contracts you see there to the right, but we'll get to that a little later. And in addition, I'm going to show you a new mod that I've just installed called Transfer Window Planner that works exceedingly well with Alarm Clock. In fact, it's made by the same people. Help you help you more precisely plan your interplanetary transfers. But in the meantime, we are docked. Oh, a little bit of a bounce. There we go. Man, that one put up a fight right to the end, didn't it? Okay, so now that we are together, it's time to start thinking about what we want to accomplish. And I think, let's take a look at map view here. And okay, there's our waypoint. We got to collect a temperature scan over that waypoint. I think I'll do that first. I think I'll do that first, uh, get that out of the way. And then after that, start thinking about finding a landing spot. Now, taking a look at this, remember Kerbin, or Kerbin, the moon, takes a little over six days to rotate, to do... Uh, a complete rotation so yeah it looks about a sixth of the way around sixth of a circle uh, let's set an alarm for four hours from now and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at this then but in the meantime you know since we're around the moon I want to start cleaning up some of my junkier satellites this is uh, Mapsat 2 or actually it was renamed Maxwell 2 but it's serving absolutely no purpose anymore, and uh, I want to start decluttering my skies. It has enough fuel to deorbit it, so here we go. Let's deorbit it. That will now crash back into the moon. So we'll just follow it down for giggles. There we go, and oh wait! Impact science! <laughs> I forgot I had some seismic scans going. Well, heck! Let's get over here to this little probe that uh, Muna 2 had left sitting near the north pole of the moon. Still 75% solar exposure. Lots of electric charge. All right, let's do this. This thing is sitting in the sun. Oh, uh, is it log seismic data or collect impact data? I always get these mixed up. Log seismic data? Try that. Uh, nope, nope, nope. That's the stock thing. Okay, collect impact data. There we go. 5.6 science. Well, waste not, want not, transmit. There we go. We got it. And uh, we still got the better part of four hours to wait until we go back to the uh, Kegel in the Karayan. So since the view here is a pretty one, why don't we do our time warping from here? It looks kind of neat since the moon is kind of, not kind of, it is rather tidally locked with Kerbin. And that brings us back to the Karayan, which is just about over its waypoint and getting ready to perform its temperature scan, finishing off this contract. And there it is. Okay, where do I have that thermometer hidden? Should have scouted this out. There it is. And log temperature. Boom, done. Oh, wait. Contract. What? There's another one. Wait, okay, close this. Says I have to do another temperature scan. Okay, let's take a look over here at Waypoint Manager. Yeah, Sector TP1. Oh, what the heck? That wasn't there before. Take a look here. Oh, yeah, and of course, it's to the east of us. Rotating away from us. So we have to rotate all the way around and catch it on the other side of our orbit. That's going to take, geez, Probably a little bit more than a couple of days to get to the, the heck with this. No, no, no. What we're going to do, we're going to put this guy down on the surface. We're going to get ready to do a landing, and then I'll deal with that later. And for my landing spot, what I'm looking at is a crater that's on the east side of the map. The Karine is just coming to the east of it just now. Uh, should just take a couple more orbits, and I should be nicely over that crater. That crater is the southwest crater. I've never landed anything there before. I've not collected any science there before. So it should be a relatively good science haul for me. And speaking of science, a few episodes ago you saw me demoing the Surface Science Pack. 
uh, a fun little mod pack that uh, works with Kerbal Inventory System that gives you all kinds of surface experiments that your Kerbals can perform. You saw me using it on the runway, but now comes the time to do it on the moon. Wait, wait, where, where, where is the, where are the parts? In the vehicle assembly building, I had loaded these inventories with surface experiment parts, but they are not here. Now, I had send, sent the lander here unmanned. You know, right now, this is the first time the thing is actually crewed. And a quick check back at the vehicle assembly building confirmed that, yes, the parts were actually put in there. But I guess, yeah, I, I guess it makes sense. I mean, these are the Kerbal's personal inventory, and without Kerbal's... You don't have the inventory. I was a little bit thrown because in the vehicle assembly building it says seat zero inventory and seat one inventory. I thought somehow it was attached to the seat, but it's attached to the Kerbals in the seat. So no Kerbals, no inventory. So sorry, no surface science today. It's a bit of a downer, but uh, we'll have to try again at some future time. In the meantime, we are now ready to perform our descent, so we have transferred all our Kerbals into the lander. We'll just nudge a little bit away from the station here. Perform the beginning of our descent burn here. There we go. And then I'm just going to time warp until I'm about 90 degrees away from my landing spot. I'm going to turn myself towards the normal vector. What I'm going to do is I'm going to watch the little mini-map down there, the bottom left, and I'm just going to burn in a normal direction, and what I want to do is I want to push that orange trajectory, which is my trajectory behind me, to where the blue trajectory uh, was. It's moving, of course, to the west as well as I do this. And the idea here, we're getting pretty close, is I've just moved my trajectory towards the west, about the same distance that the moon rotates um, over the time that the Orion does a single orbit about the moon. And so the idea is that I will land, do what I need to do, and in the meantime the Orion will orbit, and after a single orbit, uh, it should come out to be pretty close to being right overhead of the Kegel. And that should make doing the rendezvous um, quite a lot cheaper or at least a little bit cheaper. I thought it was a worthwhile thing to do, nonetheless. So we're just using up what fuel is remaining in the transfer stage. I mean, it's there, we might as well use it. So Delta V is certainly not going to be an issue. There we go, that tank is dry. So we'll ditch that. Fire up the next engine. That stage will crash into the moon and be gone. And we will lower our landing gear here. And now stuff is getting real. We are on our way down. Now, the one thing this thing doesn't have a brilliant thrust to weight ratio. And I learned from the last time I did a man landing on the moon that I need to keep an eye on my vertical speed. So I am uh, pitching up now and again to kind of keep my vertical speed under control. Unlike the tiny one-man Kegel 1, uh, this guy is no lightweight. It's uh, fully fueled, it's over 12 tons, and it's made up of two command capsules. It's got the um, soy juice descent module on the top for an upper capsule, and under that it has another capsule from Homegrown Rockets, the Pumpkin Landing Capsule. For space for two more Kerbals underneath that and putting it up to five and again the reason I did that was because I do have this put a base on the moon contract and for that you need to be able to house five Kerbals. So anyway we are now descending vertically still a couple of kilometers above the terrain so why don't we cut to a little bit lower in this descent Okay, 15 meters, 10 meters, and touchdown. Wonderful. A little darker. Well, uh, the ship is lit up in the sun. 
wait a second, wait a second, contract. The contract isn't going green over there. What's going on? Um, it's this part here. It says, please note that this must be a new outpost built for Zoltonic Electronics after the contract is accepted. I did build this after the contract was accepted. It was purpose built for this contract. Why else would I build a lander that can hold five people? Oh, for goodness sakes, it must have been when it docked with the Karayan and KSP must have gotten confused and sees this now as part of the Karayan. Well, especially considering the fact that the sort of top science module actually has been around for a long, long time. Oh man, the contract is confused. Well, let's get some Kerbals down here anyway. And I ummed and odd about what to do about this. I mean, honestly, my first reaction was to say, no, 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 you're wrong. This is a base. <laughs> I'm going to get into the persistent file. I'm going to edit it and give me this contract. But then another part of me thought, you know, maybe having a base on the moon that actually will stay there is not a bad idea. And in fact, you may remember from a number of episodes ago that I had actually designed a base and I showed you the testing of said base because it involved a lot of uh, things blowing up. But uh, I do have that still in the uh, vehicle assembly building. All I have to do is push the build button and I have a moon base. So I decided that I wasn't going to edit the persistent file. I'm going to just forget about this particular contract. Wow, this really stinks. Um, you know, I came here thinking I would fulfill three contracts, and uh, so far I have fulfilled none, but at least that third one, the plant a flag on the moon, nothing can go wrong with that. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so one contract out of three. Uh, not brilliant, but I guess not terrible. Yeah, I sent Bill out here. I figure he's the senior officer aboard. He's the one with the most experience, so he gets the honor of planting the first flag. Okay, uh, yeah, first of course, you have to name the vessel. It's the Kegel 2. And the crew, we have Bill and Tamley and Carol. And then we'll uh, put something underneath there. Oh, I hit enter. Shoot, I hit enter. <laughs> And, of course, that takes that as okay. So there we go. That's Bill's plaque. Uh, not exactly brilliant, but that's okay because we have two more Kerbals and we want to have them each put down a flag. Yeah, there is an extra half a point of experience for just putting um, a flag down as opposed to simply just walking on the surface. So we'll get Carol out here next. Okay, planting a flag. And Carol will complete the sentiment that Bill forgot here. Alrighty. Uh, well, Bill already wrote the Kegel too, so uh, this is just Carol's flag. <laughs> I might come back and delete these later. I don't know. The extra room was great. Yeah, you guys had elbow room, especially considering that you didn't have all that science equipment as well. And then, of course, it was Tamley's turn. Plant another flag. And that'll complete our trio of flags here. Yeah, Bill, speaking of Bill and being mission commander and his experience, uh, Bill actually has rocked the space-time charts. I keep track of how much time each of these folks have been in space, and this is Bill's 134th day in space. Uh, so, uh, yeah, he is well ahead. And the next person down is actually Glafia. She's at 110 days. Uh, and she's still out there on her way to Minmus. So, um, Bill's got to watch out. Glafia is nipping at his heels. But there we go. There's our trio. Let's see if we can put together a nice little uh, tableau shot here. Okay, let's turn off the uh, the UI. There we go get a nice shot. It'd be nice to get something in the background. Where's Kerbin? Okay, the sun's over there. Kerbin, Kerbin, Kerbin. you got to be able to hear someone. There you are. There's Kerbin. Let's see if we can get Kerbin in the shot. Now, one thing I've learned just recently is if you hold the Alt key and scroll with the mouse, you actually have a zoom. Normally, when you scroll in and out with the mouse, uh, you're actually moving the camera in and out, but that's actually a zoom so that we can get 
a nice shot of these folks with Kerbin in there. Let's see. Oh, oh, it's getting a little, oh, there we go. That's getting pretty nice. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Smile for the camera. Oh, they're all smiling, that's for sure. They're having themselves a great time. But enough fun and games. We got some sciencing to do. Now, I already transmitted a whole lot of science. I didn't show it to you. But then my battery started getting low. So there's still a bit still to get here. There's an atmospheric pressure scan. We'll uh, transmit that. I uh, should probably check on how electricity is doing. It's a little low, but it's doing all right. What's this notification? Oh, of course, I planted a flag on the moon. Of course, I've done that before. Uh, way back, but that was pre 1.05, so uh, the current version of Kerbal Space Program doesn't know about that. So, but we'll collect the rest of the science. Yeah, it's sort of funny. Um, I know it's really dark on the ground, but the uh, solar panel there is still in the sunlight, so I'm still generating a lot of electricity. But anyway, we'll get Carol out. She will collect the remainder of this science, start to reset the equipment, and then it's time to think about getting ourselves out of here. Okay, collect data, recover the data, and then we'll restore the materials bay. Now the goo container is actually on the other side, so I'm gonna climb over the top here, and whoa, 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 I've lost her. She's gone, no, it's, oh! Oh, ow! Oh! Wow, that was a spectacular tumble on Carol's part. I managed to do a very good job of taking out that solar panel. <laughs> Thankfully, I do have some backup static solar panels, as well as I have a fuel cell on this thing. See, slowly I am learning. Uh, putting on backups is a good idea. So there is no, uh, no crisis here, but uh, maybe that is... A bit of a portent that uh, we've overstayed our welcome so <laughs> there we go let's get Bill there we go Bill is aboard we have everybody aboard now and now it's time to start thinking about making our rendezvous so let's take a look at how we are doing and uh, what I want to do is I want to launch ahead of the Korion but not anywhere near this much ahead so we'll we'll time warp and as we're time warping you can see that the moon is rotating and we are coming out right underneath the Korion's orbit so that part of it is working out pretty well and oh I think I'll stop the time warping here I mean it's still quite a ways behind me but I want to make sure I'm ahead of it it doesn't need to be that precise it's not like this is brain surgery or anything like that yeah after all this is just just rocket science so there we go we have retracted the ladder and uh, yeah, let's get thinking about this. We're going to have to go to the north and a little bit to the west. So there we are. We'll pitch over to 45 degrees, pull it a little bit west because I want my eventual trajectory to be to the north. So I need to pull that prograde vector there. I'll switch to orbit mode. That'll make it easier. I want to pull that prograde vector right onto north because the Korion is most certainly in a polar orbit. And I'm just going to go up to about a 10 kilometer altitude, which is about the same altitude as the Korion. And then I just need to slow myself down, which of course I do by burning prograde, thus raising my apoapsis, which increases my orbital period. And I just increase it to the point where we get ourselves a rendezvous after just a single orbit. There we go. You may have noticed the closest approach there was about two kilometers, which is a little ugly, I suppose, but uh, more than workable. And after just another orbit, we were approaching the Korion. Now, the uh, Kegel here has no RCS, so it cannot do the docking. So all we're going to do is bring down our relative velocity nice and low for the Korion. Go a little lower than that. There you go, that ought to do it. And then we'll point our docking port towards the Korion to make all of this a little easier. And we'll fly Tamley over because uh, she needs to pilot the Korion. 
it was funny, after doing this, I realized that uh, the Karain does have a probe core, so I actually could have flown the Karain autonomously, but uh, oh no, Tamley, Tamley wants to do this anyway. And with the moon moving by behind us, our high-speed ballet is just about to come to a conclusion. There we go. But remember, these folks aren't going anywhere. They're not ready to head home yet. We still have that additional temperature scan that we have to do. I think I'm going to put that off until next episode. So we, we will be revisiting these folks at that time. But what I want to finish this video off with is a quick look at this transfer window planner. So we'll open up the interface here. There it is. And uh, we'll open up alarm clock along beside it because the two work together. Now in alarm clock, if you look towards the bottom, I already have some transfer window alarms already put in. And what I want to do is I want to replace those with some more accurate ones. So, for instance, let's take a look at Moho. I'm going to plot the transfer windows for the next year. So we're going to hit plot it here. We get this graph. Now I know this graph looks rather intimidating, but actually it's, it's pretty simple once you get it. The horizontal axis is your departure date, when it is that you're going to be leaving. The vertical axis is the number of travel days it's going to take you to get there. And the colors are indicating the delta V, with the darker blue indicating the cheapest route, and the red indicating the most expensive route. And it automatically picks the cheapest one within the window that you pick. So you can see it up there. It's telling me that I got a window coming up. It, it, the uh, departure date is on year 2, day 86. The arrival date is year 2, day 244 and it's going to cost me 4,777 meters per second and it even splits that between the ejection burn and the insertion burn so if you're going to do just like a flyby you can just ignore the insertion part so it's great for the planning and an add KAC alarm button just adds that right to alarm clock for your notifications in the future but what I'm really eyeing is this additional area down here uh, to the bottom left of the graph. It is still blue, yeah, right about there, and that is around year two, day 10. So I'm gonna change the window here to make the latest departure day 35 of year two and replot it. And uh, it gets a new graph, and there it is, and it's telling me that uh, that departure is going to be on year two, day 13, with an arrival on year two, day 107, that's even before the other window was even going to happen, with only a 94 day travel time, but the delta V is now 5,505 meters per second, about 730 meters per second more than the other window. But now you can make a decision. You know, now that you have that information, you can decide. For an extra 730 meters per second, I can leave significantly earlier. It's going to take me a lot quicker to get there. Is that worth it? Right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this one to alarm clock as well. And then I'm going to go through all the other various interplanetary uh, windows and do the same sort of thing. So I ended up with this now. This is what my alarm clock now looks like. So I've got a whole stack of these transfer window alarms, and what I've done is in the title of the alarm, I've included the delta V cost as well as the travel time, so I can make decisions as these alarms come up as to whether I want to do that or whether I want to take on a different transfer rendezvous. And what's really great is that all the details about the rendezvous, all your delta Vs and ejection angles and timings and all that stuff are still all attached to the alarm itself. All you have to do is click on it and all that information comes right back at you. So with that, I think I am going to be drawing this particular episode to a close. I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.